Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody, especially uh, welcome and um, thank you, Bindaji, for doing these classes with us. Uh, it's a real opportunity for all of us. And so this will be our fifth class uh, on the Supanishad. The replays are available. Um, and also they'll be slowly coming online with uh, at the YouTube channel that's listed in Bindo's profile called Advaitic Talks. And there are other uh, classes there also that have never been on Clubhouse. So check those out. Um, we'll have the usual format. Uh, where there is a PDF above uh, that has all the mantras uh, from Sanskrit clear through to an English translation. We'll turn off hand raising and chat during the actual uh, class and presentation. And then anyone is welcome to come up after that and discuss uh, what was brought forward today. Um, thank you all for being here. And uh, people who are listening through the class, please know that afterwards, any level of question related to what we're trying to take in is, is very, very welcome. So uh, the hand raising will be turned back on. So thank you very much, Bindaji. Thank you, Atmisha. Namo Brahma Vibhyo, Brahma Vidya Sampradaya Kartrabhyo, Vamsarishibhyo, Mahadhyo Namo Gurubhyaha, Sadashiva Samarampam, Shankaracharya Madhyamam, Asmatacharya Paryantam, Vande Guru Paramparam, Sruti Smriti Purananam, Alayam Karunalayam, Namami Bhagavad Pada, Shankaram Loka Shankaram, Shankaram Shankaracharyam, Keshavam Badarayanam, Sutra Bhashya Kritav Vande Bhagavandav Punapunaha, Ishoro Guru Ratmeti, Murti Veda Vivakine, Vyomavat Vyapta Dehaya, Dekshina Murta Ye Namaha, Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha, Om Shamno Mitrasham Varunaha, Shanno Bhavatvaryama, Shanna Indro Grihaspatihi, Shanno Vishnu Rurukramaha, Namo Brahmane, Namaste Vayo, Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahmasi, Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahma Vadishyami, Ridham Vadishyami, Satyam Vadishyami, Tanmam Avatu, Tad Vaktaram Avatu, Avatu Maam, Avatu Vaktaram, Om Shanti 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 Chikshan Vyakya Samaha Varnaswaraha Matrabalam Samasandanaha Ityukta Chikshadhyayaha Sahano Yashaha Sahano Brahma Varchasam Adhadasagum Hidayam Parishatam Vyakya Samaha Panjaswati Karaneshu Ati loga madi jauti shamadi vidya madi prajamadhyatmam tamahasagum hita itya chakshate atadi lokam prativi purva rupam dyauruttara rupam akasha sandihi vayus sandanam itya di lokam atadi jauti sham agni purva rupam Aditya Uttara Rupam Apas Sandihi Vaidyudas Sandanam Ityadi Jodisham Adadi Vidyam Acharya Purva Rupam Andevas Uttara Rupam Vidya Sandihi Pravajanagam Sandanam Ityadi Vidyam Adadi Prajam Mada Purva Rupam Vidotara Rupam Praja Sandihi Prajananagum Sandanam Ityadi Prajam Adhadhyatmam Adarahanu Purva Rupam Uttarahanu Ruttara Rupam Vak Sandihi Jihwa Sandanam Ityadhyatmam Iti Ma Mahasagum Hita Eva Yayevata Yeveta Mahasamhita Vyakyata Veda 
संदीयते प्रजया पशुभि ब्रह्म वर्चसेनाध्येन सुवर्गेण लोकेन यछंदसा मृषभो विश्व चंदेभ्यो अमृता चंबूवा समेन्द्रो मेदया स्पृणोत अमृत से देवधारणो भूयास शरीर मे विचर्षण चिह्वा मे मधुमत्तमा कर्णाभ्यांभूरी विश्रुव ब्रह्मण कोशोसी मे दया पिता श्रुत मे गोपाय आवहंदी वितन्वान कुर्वाणा चीरमात्म वासा गुंसी महमगाश्च अन्न पाने चर्वदा तथो मे श्रियमाव लोमशा पशु स्वाह स्वाह आमायं दुब्रह्मचारिण स्वाह विमायं दुब्रह्मचारिण स्वाह प्रमायं दुब्रह्मचारिण स्वाह तमायं दुब्रह्मचारिण स्वाह शमायं दुब्रह्मचारिण स्वाह यशो जने सना स्वाह श्रेयान्वस्ोसा स्वाह तम ता भग प्रवेशा स्वाह सग प्रवेश स्वाह तस्हस्रशाखे निबगाहम तोयी मजे स्वाह यथा प्रवर्ता यती यदा मासा अहर्जर एवं मा ब्रह्मचारिण दातरायंदु सर्वद स्वाह प्रवेशोसि प्रेमा पहि प्रमापद्य स्वा भूरी भूर्भुवस्वरी वेतस्तिस्रो व्याहृत तामुह तस्म चतुर्थी महाचम से प्रवेदयते महयति तद्रह्म स आत्मा अंगान्यन्यादेवता भूरी वा लोक भूवरीक्ष सुवरीसौ लोक महय आदि वावसर्वे लोका महीयंदे भूरी वग्नि भूवरी वायु सुवरी महयति चंद्रमा चंद्रमसा वावसर्वा ज्योतिषी महीयंदे भूरी वाच भूवरी सामानी सुवरी यजुगुंशी महयति ब्रह्म ब्रह्मण वावसर्वे वेद महीयंदे भूरी वै प्राण भूवरीपान सुवरी व्यान महयम अन्न वावसर्वे पाणमहींदे तवाएतास्तुर्धा तदस्तस्तस्रो व्याहृद तायो वेद स वेद ब्रह्म सर्वैसस्मैवा बलिमावहती सयो अंधर्हृद आकाश तस्म पुषो मयो मनोमय अमृत हिण्मय अंतरेण तालुके यशस्तन वावलबदे सेंद्रयोनि यसौ केशांदो विवर्त व्यपोह शीर्षकपाले भुवरीग्नौ प्रतिषति भुवयति वायौ सुवरी महयति ब्रह्मणि आपनोदि स्वाराज्य आपनोदि मनसस्पति वाक्पतिचुस्पति श्रोत्रपतिर्विज्ञानपति तदोती आकाश शरीर ब्रह्म सत्यात्म प्राणाराम मन आनंद शांति समृद्धमृत प्राचीन योग्योपास स्वा now this is the anuvak saptam anuvak seventh one which we are going to start today prithivi andariksham dyaur disho vandar disah agnir vayu raditya chandrama nakshatrani 
ആപ ഔഷധയോ വനസ്പതയ ആകാശ ആത്മ ഇത്യതിഭൂതം അധാധ്യാത്മം പ്രാണോ വ്യാനോ പാനസാന സമാന ചക്ഷുഷോത്രം മനോ വാക്വക് ചർമ്മമാസാം സാവസ്തി മജ്ജ ഏതതിവിധായ ഋഷിരവോചത് പാങ്ക്തം വാ ഇതം സർവം പാങ്ക്തേ നൈവ പാങ്ക്തം സ്പൃണോതി സോ ഇൻ ദ സിക്സ്ത് അനുവാക് വി ന്യൂ ദറ്റ് മെഡിറ്റേഷൻ യൂസിംഗ് സിംബിൾസ് ഓഫ് അത് ഫോർ ദ ഹിരണ്യഗർഭ പ്രാപ്തി now in the seventh section also it teaches meditation through the simple of pankthas pankthas are the five fold sets of objects there are three three groups in the vyashti that is in the macrocosm and corresponding three five three pair three sets of five in the vyashti also which is in the microcosm so this is now what is being discussed in this chapter both these these objects both are outside the world and inside the body one is outside the world the three sets of adilogam etc and the other other three sets are in the body within the body the two should be contemplated through upasana as identical with each other this is also an upasana for a middle uh, you know middle category of students who are who need pratika or dependency on a symbol for meditation they are not able to meditate on the you know absolute things or which are not concrete for their mind to grasp so this both external that is macrocosmic and internal which is microcosmic together constitute the universe and which is also the manifestation of brahman in the previous section also it was meditation on the brahman brahman means here we are talking about hiranyagarbha through the concrete symbols of for the middle middle ten middle middle uh, category of students prithivi andariksham dhyau so prithivi earth antariksham is the interspace dhyau is the heaven so between prithivi and dhyau is the antariksham then disha there are four main directions east west north south but there are also andar disha avandar disha or which are called the intermediary quarters agni is vayu agni is fire vayu is air aditya is sun chandrama is moon nakshatrani are the stars so the first five are prithivi antariksham dyau disha and avandar disha and then the next one is agni vayu aditya chandrama and nakshatrani and the third third set of five is aapa aushada vanaspada aakasha aatma iti aapa means water aushada means herbs vanaspada are trees and aakasha is the space aatma is here is not the atma of the individual but here it is for the virat because we are talking about the macrocosm so this we have got the three sets here of five each iti adibhutam this is adibhutam means external creations atha adhyatma now let us look into internal that in the vyashti the three group of five for the internal ones അധ്യാത്മ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ അധ്യാത്മം പ്രാണ വ്യാന അപാന ഉദാന സമാന ദിസ് ഫൈവ് പഞ്ച പ്രാണ ഈസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് സെറ്റ് ഓഫ് ത്രീ ദൻ വി ഹാവ് 
சக்ஷு சோத்ரம் மனஹ வாக் துவக் தட் இஸ் த ஐஸ் த இயர்ஸ் த மைண்ட் த ஸ்பீச் அண்ட் த சென்ஸ் ஆஃப் டச் ஆர்கன் ஆஃப் டச் தென் கம்ஸ் த தேர்ட் அண்ட் ஃபைனல் ஃபைவ் செட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த இன்டர்னல் திங் Charma means skin, Mamsa means flesh, Snava means muscles, Asti means bone, Majja means bone marrow, Adividaya having revealed them, Rishi Avochat, the sage said, Sarvam vai idam, this all are indeed. That means what is called Sarvam is indeed. included in the adilogam and adi adhyatmam in the sets of 333 in the macrocosm and the microcosm and each one of them are five five in number so in the adilogam 5 into 3 15 is there in the adhyatmam also 5 into 3 15 is there so they are rest corresponding to the internal micro and macrocosm this identification between these two the microcosm and the macrocosm and the pairs now this this pair they can't call pairs it is a triplets that is the way in which it has to be identified pangtam these are all called pangtam pangtam means set of five பாங்கேனோதி வித் தெல்ப் ஆஃப் தீஸ் பாங்கஸ் ஒன் சுட் மெடிடேட் ஸ்ப்ருணோதி மீன்ஸ் ஒன் சுட் மெடிடேட் அப்பான் பாங்கம் இந்த திஸ் இஸ் கால்ட் பாங்க உபாசன விச் த எர்த் இன்டர்ஸ்பேஸ் ஹெவன் ஃபோர் மெயின் குவார்ட்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் த ஃபோர் இன்டர்மீடியரி குவார்ட்டர்ஸ் ஃபயர் ஏர் சன் மூன் ஸ்டார்ஸ் then water herbs trees space and virat these constitute three groups of five for the adibhutam in the world macrocosmic and then it is prana vyana apana samana udana in the microcosm the eyes ears mind speech organ of touch second set skin flesh muscle bone and marrow is a, the third set and the sa- the sage who instructed this meditation he said pangtena eva prantam spranodi by identifying this five fold in the adibhutam and in the adhyatmam and identifying that in in the individual the the whole world is represented by the five of the three sets so this is a type of upasana which is being called in the in the in the pankta upasana we have seen that samhita upasana vyahruti upasana and hiranyagarbha upasana here is the pankta upasana now pankta upasana okay vyashti and samashti is what is being identified by the pankta meditator so what happens is that in the upanishad we have this macrocosmic pankta means five sets prithivi andariksham dhyau disha and avantara disha that is all the first set of five it is called loka pankta by adi shankara in his commentary that is what are the loka prithivi lokam antariksha lokam dyavu lokam disha lokam avantara disha lokam like that loka pankam then the second set is is the macrocosmic is agni vayu aditya chandrama nakshatrani these are all devatas and these corresponding devatas are the ones which are in the indriyas also where the in the individual each one is represented by the indriyas so these devatas are called deva pankta devata pankta 
and then we have apa aushada vanaspati akasha atma waters aushada means herbs these aushada is are normally they give rise to their fruits or you know produce once and that plant is perished it is not like trees a tree will remain and it will season by season it will keep on giving fruits but what is called an aushada aushada is that one which is cultivated or cultivated and done for the purpose of one yield only and then from the yield what it is given the seeds are put again like the rice wheat all of them are aushada aushadi means medicinal value they have got medicinal value and vanaspada is is the trees where seasonally they become big and every season they yield fruits akasha space it is there inside and outside so there is no where akasha cannot be the thing and atma is here represented is representation of virat so these are all bhuta pankta means panja panja bhutas for the purpose of and all the three put together is adi bhutam it is that is loka pankta devata pankta bhuta pankta bitam becomes samashti pancha panchaka uh, pankta trayam samashti pankta trayam then adhyatmam correspondingly one prana apana vyana samana udana so respiratory system apana is excretory system vyana is a circulatory system udana is a reversing system and samana is the digestive system and it is known as vayu panchakam because they are all connected with the prana vayu and the second set is equivalent to the devata panktam is here indriyas the chakshu eyes shrotram ears manaha mind walk organ of speech tok is the organ of touch and this is the indriya panktam corresponding to the devata panktam in the samashti the third group is what is called is is the charman the skin mamsa the flesh snava the muscles asti bones and majja in the in the ayurveda also this these are all called the dhatus any imbalance in the dhatus we can be seen its effect on the skin or flesh or muscle or bone or marrow so when the dhatus dhatus means which is there in the in the pankatrayam of the samashti which is called apa aushada vanaspada aakasha atma so any any one of them becomes imbalanced in the in the cosmos micro macrocosm and the individual also is not in tune with the macrocosm the microcosm when it is not tuned with the macrocosm the sickness invades the body and that is shown in the skin flesh muscle bone and marrow and this is how the ayurveda doctors by find out what what is the imbalance between these two and they they give the the bhuta pankam that is the the you know what are the creation that was as vanaspati or aushada all those thing to make the imbalance rectified that so this is connected with ayurveda also etat adividaya rishi ravochat the rishi prescribed these pankta six pankas sets of three for the macro three set of three for the micro pankteena va pankta sprunodi by meditating on this panktam from the panktam in your body with identifying with the panktam of the samashti and the on the macrocosm panktam va idam sarvam once you meditate and define the identity between the 
माइक्रोकॉस्मिक एंड मैक्रोकॉस्मिक यू आर इन ट्यून विद सर्व दट इज पांगतम व इदम सर्व दिस सेट ऑफ फाइव एंड इन द इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सिक्स इन द मैक्रो थ्री माइक्रो थ्री दैट फॉर्म्स द एंटायर क्रिएशन सो बाई विशुलिंग दिस टोटली द सीकर ऑफ एंड अटेन स्ट्रेंथ but both in the, the from the what you call from the individual point of view he is in tune with the external world where he invigorates the internal representation to invigorate the external the macrocosmic corresponding thing this is the pankta upasana or pankta brahma upasana here brahma is for the virat not hiranyagarbha the earlier one was for hiranyagarbha whereas here it is for the virat so the benefit of the brahma loka is the chitta shuddhi the chitta ekagrata and chitta uh, vishalata that the opening up of the you know the mind to understand the cosmic factors and ekagrata means the concentration with which when he does the meditation he achieves this by the process of pankta upasana then comes the next set of meditation in the anuvaka 8 which is for the higher what you call slightly higher intellectual students it teaches meditation for superior students through the symbol of form and uh, how the symbol is used through throughout the vedas and how the compliances are being done is being described in this particular om iti om iti brahma om iti itagum sarvam om itya dhanukruti ha sma va अभी अश्रावयेत वा अश्रावयन्ती ओम इति सामान्य गायन्ती ओम सोम इति शस्त्राणि शगुम संती ओम इति अध्वर्यु प्रतिगरम प्रतिग्रनादि ओम इति ब्रह्मा प्रसूति ओम इति अग्निहोत्रम अनुजानाति ओम इति ब्राह्मणा प्रवक्षन आहा ब्रह्म उपासन ब्रह्म आपनोवन उपनोति ब्रह्मै वापनोति नाउ इन दिस वन यू विल सी दैट हाउ इट इज गिवन दैट ओम इति मींस व्हेन इति इज एडेड इट इज टू इंडिकेट द वर्ड ओम ओके सो ओम इति ब्रह्म मींस द वर्ड is brahma as brahman sarvam idam om iti so everything all this is is om indeed omkara alone so one is om iti brahma and om iti sarvam so do both so here from here we can make out that what brahma brahman here see suppose i sometimes i use brahma sometimes i use brahman so don't misunderstand between the two words it depends upon the subject so the brahma is used for even for a priest there is a word a priest class is called brahma then there is a god with four faced which i call normally refer as chaturmukha brahma and then there is brahma in sanskrit but when we in indicate it in english we normally use it as brahman to avoid the confusion but in the context which we are discussing here i am neither talking about the uh, four faced uh, devata brahma or the atharva veda brahma which is the priest who is sitting for a yagna whenever such occasion comes i will specifically mention that otherwise it is to be understood the word brahma is brahman only okay 
तो एतत् ओम इति दिस ओमकारा इज इंडीड हा स्मा वै देर आर थ्री निपात विच आर बीइंग यूज हा स्मा वै इट्स ऑल फॉर यूज फॉर असर्टेनिंग द वर्ड इंडीड दैट मींस इंडीड all this is nothing but other than nothing but brahma so you have to understand that the one who he is telling to the med- the meditator that meditation should be very clear that we are talking about all this as brahman not don't have the idea that it is something separate and unapproachable we are not talking about nirguna brahman we are talking about saguna brahman here because om meditation is possible only for saguna brahman nirguna brahman is na upasitavya it is not an upasa upasana vastu because it is not an object for yato vacho nivartande aprapya manasa saha we know that in this upanishad also we will hear that so what that nirguna brahman is not a object of meditation whatever may be the means which you we use it the nirguna brahman is because of the nirgunatvam in it or the, there is no quality in it it is not a object of meditation so here if the meditation is on the saguna brahman anukriti means ek is an also an expression of acceptance now it anukriti whenever there is an expression of acceptance the word om is used now for example if we look at uh, an equivalent word we use it in o- in english okay the o n k we say all right all good well enough suppose did you have a nice day well it was okay so like that or is is it okay if i come about 7 pm or 8 pm so you know, the other person will say okay but i mean acceptance no otherwise do you want to come with us the other person will say okay in india the vedic tradition was they will always use the word om so as soon as my parents give me the per- okay means here the permission or acceptance i will come there and stay with you see again the word permission is indicated by the word okay here so what what we should understand is that even though the word okay is not om the usage here which is anukriti i am talking about the word anukriti so as to show the anukriti the accept, expression of acceptance instead of place of okay when see in olden days om was being used by everybody om anukriti api asravayanti so in the main yajna when the ritik tells to the pradigaram the other uh, the, the other priest advaryu to ch- chant this mantra so he will say om means he is going to chant the mantra now so he is accepting that and it's here for acceptance and ashravayanti that he makes direct recital of the god to the i mean to the to the gods om iti ashravaya om may you recite gayanti om iti gayanti samani so in the samaveda the saman that it is also a name of a not not only samaveda pri he is also a samaveda priest sitting for the yagna so he also says that om before chanting the samaveda mantras om idi shamsandhi now the rigveda mantra when it is not in and in, in with the intonation if it is not chanted as a simple sentence it is called samsa and that when it is being chanted it is called shamsanti so shastrani oh, it is called shastra and one who chants it is called shamsanti shastrani shamsanti means the one rigveda priest 
chants the mantra without the notations for higher note lower note etc iti om shom iti adviryu pratigrnati om again om shom the prati this adviryu is a yajurveda prince uh, priest yajurveda priest before chanting he will say om shom so the the samaga priest says om and stands the samagayana just the rigveda priest chants the rigveda mantra om and then his his chanting is called samsandhi in the other you who is a yajurveda priest he starts with om shom and then stands the other yajurveda mantras pratigrnadi expresses pratigaram permission to chant the uttering the omkara then calls brahma prasodi brahma is the atharvana veda priest and he is the one who chants the atharva veda he also says iti om anujanati he starts the atharva vedana mantra so all the four month priests of rigveda yajurveda samaveda and atharvana veda all of them starts the, their respective mantras with omkara then for the grihastha agnihotradi so the agnihotram iti om pravakshan brahmana aha om iti so the brahmana the brahmin who wants to do this agnihotra he also starts chanting the agnihotra mantras with starting with omkara om iti upapnavan upna upapnavani brahma let me attain the vedic knowledge is the chanting by the brahmana means hear the brahmana word is for the brahmachari eva upapnodi and he starts the chanting for learning the mantras vedic mantras as a brahmachari when he attains the uh, gurukula and when the teacher is and he, when he teacher is instructing him and he attains eva apnodi brahma so he attains the brahma here is the vedic knowledge see again the word brahma is used for the atharvana veda priest brahma is used also for the vedic knowledge brahma is for chaturmukha brahma the devata so we we when the, depending upon the context will which word is being used that will be cleared here the om in the beginning for the pranava uh, pranava upasana is the saguna brahman which is a set om iti dagum sarvam so all the sarvam is coming from the word brahman that is the brahman word then the brahma word is used for the atharvana priest who is one of the priests sitting for the yajna along with the yajurveda rigveda and samaveda prince priest then the grihastha or the householder when he starts agnihotram he also starts with om and the brahmachari when he starts learning the veda he is also chanting it with om iti and eh, upapnodi then he is learning the brahma means the knowledge of vedas by chanting om and the mantras of the veda ved which he is chanting so this section deals with the omkara upasana for the one who knows this terminologies and where this is being deployed by the different people for the yajna for agnihotram for learning the vedas etc so he is fully uh, conversant with that thing that here om can omkara can represent virat hiranyagarbha ishvara and nirguna brahman because 
in the mandukya kariga mandukya we heard that there it was for the turiya then virat is being represented here in the previous one virat on virat was the upasana mandi in the hiranyagarbha which is there in the ishavasi also we know that om was used there also in that is for hiranyagarbha so samashti stula prapancha all the three samashti means virat stula hiranyagarbha and uh, ishvara is the prapancha is the subtle in the in the three categories Om Iti Brahma Iti Upasita. That means in this form, we have one has to do the Upasana form that it is represented every every object in the world, which I have told earlier. The word Om is derived out of Akara, which is starting from the, when you open the mouth from the throat. the o is the middle of the palate and makara m is when you close the mouth so from opening the mouth to the closing of the mouth is the word om now the word om is representation of all utterances all utterances means all objects by because every object has a name and the name has what alphabets and the alphabets fall within the a and m the aum so therefore omkara is representational for all names and forms all names and forms are nothing but brahma only brahman only okay sarvam khalu idam brahma when it is says that it is representing that sarvam and indeed all this is a brahma here also omiti tagum sarvam all these are nothing but other than brahma so from whichever aspect we look at it om is one word for in the representational word for brahman if we if you remember then in the kena upanishad verse 5 yad yad vachan abhyuditam yena vaj abhyudite tadeva brahmatvam viddhi nedam ididam upasate the object of meditation yad vacha na abhyuditam which the words cannot describe it yena vak abhyuditam by which the word gets a meaning out of meaning the awareness the consciousness of the object everything comes from the word but the word cannot by itself have the consciousness the consciousness is conveyed in the word when a object is named it tateva brahmatvam viddhi you should know that consciousness which gets experienced when we use a word not by the, what the object stands for it nor the physical form of the object but the awareness which is generated when the word is uttered tadeva brahmatvam vidhi you should know that is what is the brahman not yet vajan abhyuditam yena vag abhyudite and also also says that na idam yet upasit ne nedam yet idam upasate not the object which you think that you are you are you no know, doing the upasana as o brahman suppose if you are like if you are doing a omkara upasana as a pratika that alphabet is written in and you are thinking that is om no that is not neda mididam upasate that is not the one which is to be meditated upon so what is to be meditated upon yet vachan abhyuditam yena vag abhyutyate 
tadeva brahmattvam vidhi netam idhum vaste so it is not the word nor the object standing for the word but the awareness which is happening when a word is heard that awareness is brahma is because that is the consciousness in the object in the subject and even in the word in the sound the sound also has got the awareness in it so that is how the meditation has to be done in the om iti om iti sarvam so everything you can meditate upon thinking that this any word which is thing om is representing all the alphabets and all alphabets put together all the uh, words are nothing but alphabets and words are indicative of objects whether they are internal objects or external objects there is no other word which can one word which can express the entire objects of the world any other word will be specific suppose if i say chair or table or cow or bird they are all specific but if i want to use one word for the entire nomenclatures of everything in the world the only word which we can think about is om and that is given to the word brahma because brahma indeed brahman is indeed everything in the world right from the creator to the speck of creation everything is that so saguna brahman onwards to the speck of creation is everything is that brahman only and that brahman is indicated one word which we can use to indicate that is om so this is the way in which the meditation on brahman has to be conducted now there there is one thing which we have to note that is the four vedic priests also when they are using om we heard we have heard this before in one of the previous anuvak in the fourth anuvak were chanting an om in the beginning of a veda and ending of the veda so the word om when it is uttered by the hotra hota men the rigveda priest he is representing the entire rigveda mantras same way the advarya which is the yajurveda priest when he says om he says the entire atharva veda udgada is the samaveda priest is known as udgada and udgada when it is udgadr is the word which is used in the sanskrit udgadr when he chants om the entire samaveda is being represented and brahma is the name for the atharvana veda priest and that when he says om the entire atharvana veda has been represented so when in the in the in the yagna there are totally 18 people which is there in the uh, in the yagna the mandukya verse 1 2 7 if you remember it you will you will understand that there are yajamana and his wife yajamana and yajamanini and then there are 16 priests of four each in each direction east west south and north each veda representing each direction and on each one there will be four so and the front one will be the representing the one and behind him will be the other vedic members so if on the east if it is rigveda priest in the front 
he will be followed by yajurveda sama veda and other veda veda priest in the if you go to the in the south it will be the order will be reversed the the atharva veda priest will be in the front and like that so each word there will be four set of priests and that way four by four is 16 priests and yajamana and yajamani the wife and the husband uh, the the ritual that those are the performer of the yajna so all these put together 18 people are there and all the 18 will chant om depending upon the requirement so if the priest is asking the the yajamana can i start the yajna the yajamana and uh, the uh, wife both of them were together as will say om means permission okay so that is how the yajna starts and in between when the chanting the priest will tell them this anukriti means please give the acceptance for me to do the next step of the yaga so that time again they will say om sometimes they will be asked to chant the mantra and that time they will chant the mantra with the om in the front and the ending with the om so om is used in almost all steps of the yaga so this is as far the yaga is concerned the agni hotra where there are panjagni where the five places and the center the four quarters and the Uh, the center there is a fire also so all those five panchagni when it is agni householder is doing the agni hotra on a regular basis aajivanandam aamarana the thing agni hotram kuriyad once he starts as a garhasyam when he start the householder's job he has to do the agni hotram every day till his death and on his death the fire from the center fire this thing is taken for lighting his funeral pyre so that karma is being done by his son who takes over the agnihotram from him later so the son also learns the yajnas everything from the father that tradition is being passed on from generation to generation and when this brahma when the son becomes a brahmachari and wanting to learn uh, vedas he also starts with om then only he is being to, he is first told to learn chant om and then he supanayana is being conducted and then he does the vedic chanting and learn the vedic upanishads so this this way we will find that the the upasana is so easy for those who are familiar with the vedic systems to where to start the om when to start the om and the importance of the om now we will come to the ninth chapter ninth section and 10th section in the next class because in the ninth section it emphasizes on the performance of the duty of a student and the 10th and 11th are for that is a paravidya and apara this is aparavidya or 9th one and paravidya is on the 10th and the 11th one is where the departing student is being given advice we will see it in the coming classes i'll stop here for the day o शो मित्र वरुण शो बव्यम शन्न इंद्रो बृहस्पति शो विष्णुक्रम नमो ब्रह्मणे नमस्ते वायो वाये प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मासी वामेव प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्म वदिष्या हृद वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मावत वक्तारमवतु अवतु मां अवतु वक्तारम ओम शांति 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 ही ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಧನ್ಯವಾದ Thank you so much Bindaji for the class and thank you for everyone who's here and participating uh, and welcome also uh, Prasad glad you could join at this point um so uh this was our fifth class on the Taitriya and um the replays are available uh for people to catch up uh for those of you who are new or who came in late the usual format is Wednesday and Friday at 8:30 p.m. IST for class in a moment I'll open up the hand raising and uh the chat and we'll have a Q&A uh with your questions and doubts and so forth on today's class to discuss those with Bindaji and then usually what we have is a Sunday Q&A that's for other matters uh related to um uh this house and uh advaita and so forth same time uh so in a, I'll turn this over to Prakash to uh any comments he wants to make or questions on today's class and I'll be opening the hand raising and chat and anyone's welcome uh to come up regarding the the lecture from today and um if you're not in this house it's open to everyone please uh, join it so you can see the rooms uh in the future thank you so much bindaji prakash yes thank you artemisia pranam bindaji thank you very much for such a deep pranam pranam yeah such a deep uh, insight into the the 7th and the eighth and one what you know i have to listen to this replay for a few times because there's a lot of like you say there's a lot of parts to it but it's all you know uh, to bring the attention to gather the attention the ekagrata that i was able to grasp very clearly and then in the eighth there is a further integration through om to such uh, you know and the contextualization through the vedic hymns and uh, the process by which it is done it is so beautifully elaborated uh, i don't have any specific question but i want to know more about uh, the, the the five uh, <clears throat> prana apana udana the the five aspects of breath would you know in the upasaka for the upasaka for the student can they use any one of these to integrate and start assimilating this how, how does it work in in terms of how the students is assimilate this into their meditation that's my question see here the pancha prana prana apana samana vyana udana are being taken only as one of the five uh, one of the triplets of the individual aspect now the corresponding aspect of the macrocosm is what is given as you know prithivi antariksham vayu avantara avantariksham that five are corresponding to these pra- five pranas which is mentioned here it is only for upasana purpose but if you want to know what is the five pranas role in the individual we have done this in one of the upanishad earlier if you remember it where each one has been very clearly this mentioned about i think it is uh, prashna upanishad where it was very clearly given you know what are the role in that so by a person who has studied that in that here he it is easy for him to correlate that the prana mukhya prana is the one which is which is based on which the heavens are being represented then the apana is represented by the the earth then there is vyana which is spread throughout the body which is spreading circulatory system enter through the body compare body that is corresponding to the the space between the heaven and the earth 
and then there is samana which is you know in the center region of the, uh, the abdominal region which but operates but also reaches to every place through the blood vessels so that is the avantara dishas or intermittary intravitri spaces or directions and udana is the one which lifts him from this body to the heavens at the time of departure through the uh, in the skull so he is able to identify the placement of the, the lokas and this pranapana in the body so it is easy for him to meditate upon that how the role is being played by these both from the macrocosmic level and the microcosmic level ah yes yeah so the the interconnectedness of the vishti and the samashti the macro and the microcosm is a <clears throat> it's a strong reinforcement of the ekagrata yes because the microcosm is a representation of the macrocosm every microcosm is the same and every microcosm is representation of the macrocosm that is why we are able to identify with the universe ourselves and also when the upanishad says that we are brahman in that sense from the creator he was all alone sai ekaha he was one and he was alone as he in this upanishad it will come in the taitri upanishad how it is said atma atmana akasha sambuda akasha advayu vayu ragni agni rapa like the creation is being mentioned here and that aspect when you today look at it in the, in the meditators form they think every individual is not different from the other one if you really know what is the process of creation and every macrocosm is there as representation in every microcosm therefore how can i see you separate from me when my entire creation is from the same material world you are also being created so that sarvatma bhava can be easily achieved when you have this identification of the microcosm with the macrocosm and that is the same for every microcosm when you know that the whole world is nothing but the same appearing as many that is how we are to understand yes 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 so the the experiential aspect of the upasana of the, the, the sadhak and the realization is simply connected and so any mental processing is actually not going on okay. so that's an affirmation for the student in the in the in the stable uh, sadhana of you know, the meditative process this is up my own <laughs> insight i'm gaining so thank you Pachi. thank you prashant Prasad, do you care to speak right now? You're welcome to if you do. No pressure at all. Sometimes he's caretaking his daughter at this time. Uh, okay, just one moment. And again, anyone who would like to come up and speak on what we were covering today and speak with Bindaji, that would be wonderful. I had one comment. Um, glad you're here, Venkat. Uh, is um, you've used this very phrase. before in other room in other times this uh you use the word process you've uh, indicated when one really sees the process of creation uh these are my words for it, you've said but you've said process of creation then one that's when one knows uh truly that there's no division and um uh and one is all uh is is there anything you could say about why you choose to use that word process and then i will go ahead to those other who are here thank you see the process is described in the upanishads if you remember the aitri upanishad there also 
the creation has been mentioned in the beginning, the first section, first chapter. Here in Taitri also you will find. And in the Veda throughout, we will find that a methodology of creation is given for the purpose of meditation or upasana so that the student identifies with the process of creation given in the in the Upanishad as the process through which he has taken birth or he has come as a being in this world. He is a product of the process and that product is not different from where it has been made. This is exactly in the Chandogya also we found that, you know, from the mud when the, you know, the mud pot has come. The process of making the pot is the creation, but pot is the product. But mud is the source from where it has come. So, Vacharambanam, Vikaro, Namadeyam, Ritigatatatyam. So, whatever may be the names, the multitude of names which is made out of the lump of clay into, say, millions of pots or dolls or lamps or anything for that matter, the names can vary. It is what the dependency on the names. But the process being the same, the product cannot be different because process is the same, the, uh, the source is the same, the process is the same. How can the products be different? Is that thought which should come to the mind of a meditator who is doing thought in meditation in the process, even when you are doing the meditation on the process itself. That is why I use the word process. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. I think the two of you raised your hand about the same time. Who would like to go ahead? Majinath can go ahead. I'll wait. Good. Yeah, go ahead then. Okay. Namaste, Majinath. Sir, Bill, sir. Namaste, sir. Hari Ram, sir. Okay. Uh, 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 all the people who are present here, all the talk, surrender to all the people, uh, Sharana Sharanaati. Bindu sir, Namaste. Uh, thank you so much for uh, the explanation. As well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, thank you so much for the explanation, sir, uh, which was very, really meaningful. And really it was uh, 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 understandable, sir. Uh, you have very well portrayed and very well explained, sir. Thank you. Sir, I got one question, sir. Please explain. See, uh, for in the initial stage, you started uh, 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 by explaining the Datus, uh, which an Ayurvedic doctor recognizes, uh, uh, such as Vata, Pitta, Kapha, and Dat. So, how a person can recognize the synchronicity between the microcosm as well as microcosm without touching the human body? That's my question, Sindhu, sir. Thank you. Thank you. See, that is why in that I am not an expert in Ayurveda, but from whatever I have interaction with doctors for my own treatment and my parents' treatment during their time, I had seen this. They observe the human body, whether touching means not the nadi alone. They look at the skin, the skin tone, the skin color, what is this thing. There is, there will be difference in the, you know, joints. The color changes in the joints means there is some sort of a illness which is being shown by the skin. And sometimes, you know, the, un, the lower eyelid becomes very darkish in nature and that indicates certain problems for the health. So basically these symptoms on the skin, the, what you call the whiteness of the eye, and, you know, the anemic nature of the body, all these things are indicative of the imbalance with the nature. And what Ayurveda says is that these two, Aushade Vanaspati, these are the two things which gives us all the nutrition which is required. No tablets. The tablets are only concentrated medicine of the same 
which is found in nat- nature by say in the form of calcium phosphor magnesium zinc or you know vitamin b12 c whatever may be that all those things iron etc zinc all those things are available in the nature as in the fruits and vegetables and and grains millets etc so when we are in tune with the nature's food the processing sometimes removes some of the good material which is there in the in the in the vegetable or in the grains and we feel we'll run short of that in our body and that appears in the form of a disease in the body this is how the ayurvedic doctors are able to identify what is the problem and they will also ask and test or sometimes even may physically see and check the excreta or the urine to see what are being thrown out by the body they can make out the differences so based on this they know what is the lack in the body and based on that they make the patient take whatever is required in the form of either lekhya kashaya or arishta these are the ways in which they make it and by the way how is your health now arvind sir thank you so much sir it felt very so so think uh, of your explanations uh, bindu sir uh, thank you so much for considering me and recognizing as uh, yes uh, you are aware of but my injury bindu sir bindu sir you uh, last time you said like uh, i had still remember sir uh, first of all thank you sir sir you said like uh, in this uh, difficult situation in this uh, sort of suffering uh, only two things will help you oh, that is uh, being patient and being a, a positive and you also discussed about uh, your own sort of health also sir uh, 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 hope you are also doing great sir thank you so much sir yes uh, c- coming to my health system sir uh, bindu sir uh, again uh, thanks to you sir from your conceptualizations and uh, external outsourcing of uh, reading and uh, inputting the manifestations and applying into the body uh, <clears throat> bindu sir i would like to really uh, dedicate or uh, surrender this uh, re- uh, 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 healing system to the entire universe yes there is a possibility that by the, from the manifestation we can really change uh, we can really uh, bend the laws of physics as well as the laws of medicines whatever the laws which has been found out by the humans after the oh, by upanishads and all it can be reversed uh, uh, based on the consciousness as well as the uh, conscious manifestation by being the positive and yes by uh, having the patience the shanti in the chitta yes yes bindu sir yes bindu sir that's the truth of the life thank you so much sir it's good sir almost something is happening for, from the manifestation sir thank you sir thank, thank you thank you manjana i am happy to hear that you are in the you are getting better and you are in the right track may god be always with you and be the source within you see the source within you and as you said manifest the god in you you will be all right take care of yourself Very thank well. you sir thank you sir thank you you too sir thank you i wanted to add to that um manjunat and i apologize oh is he in the audience i hope uh and yes you are in the audience so you could hear me i you know i also and probably others re- remember when you've spoken with bindaji and talked about uh, the difficulties and challenges you've gone through and i was really glad you kept the same profile picture it helped me to remember you and and i really appreciate your coming up uh it's very very beautiful uh thank you um venkat uh haryom bidaji uh, this is sort of opening uh, are you broader dimensions here bidaji uh, so this is one uh, one group i'm try to get my interpretation if that or or a question you can take take it that way the pongta the the seventh anuvaka uh, the prut the loka pongta and devata pongta and the buddha pongta right the, the three sets uh, that mostly talk about uh, the 
macrocosm and the the vayu pankta you know that uh, and the indriya pankta and uh, dhatu pankta this are uh, talking about i think uh, towards uh, microcosm uh, so between these two i think there is one uh, um, closure in a mantra pankta naiva panktagam sprunoti iti uh, is this uh, connecting everything binoji is that you know it is treating everything you know on a as one or a whole that that completes it you know it it complete itself what is getting conveyed here um so uh, that is my first question vidaji and the second deduction is is samhita eventually explaining that integration because it is you know it it is laying out those pankas and may not exactly integrating and letting us know how all this are coming together you know that makes it a, you know a manifested brahman what is uh, that what is that integration uh, getting conveyed one and is um, we need to go back to uh, that uh, samhita to see that integration in work you know that functional part of it uh, how, how does this come together binoji <clears throat> Pankteneva Panktam Spranoti, that means that by Panktas, which are there as six of them, three in the macro, three in the micro. So Pankteneva, by meditating on the Panktas, Panktam Spranoti means, Spranoti means the word means is realized, the word. So through the five of the microcosm and when you identify that as a microcosm available in the macrocosm that identification is the one which is the what is being revealed in the form of what you call identity with the virat here the here it is a virat upasana the earlier one was a hiranyagarbha upasana here it is a virat upasana so the atma is a virat here so the virat which is the stoola brahman in the form of creation that virat is nothing but is there in the present me as my atma here is what the the meditator will be identifying with it so that these two together when one identifies with that five panktams by identifying panktam to panktam then that it reveals spranoti it reveals you the entire macrocosm through your microcosm that is how it is to be understood now the second question what is what is the second thing integration thing which you asked i think that uh, I, i think before that i think i just uh, just closure on this question that you know for example devata panktha right agni vayu aditya chandra nakshatra right that that integration is uh, you know for example the chakshu devata or you know vag devata that integration is you know corresponding that you know to the indri, that indriya prantha there is an open integration available binduji that uh, I, that between these two the overlaps are available between micro and macro is that the way to go uh, On, yeah on, you know. that is the way to go okay I, because that, I, Ag, agni agni devata is in the macrocosm hmm. and uh, the organ of speech the is considered the seat of agni devata like that you have to connect each of the organ with the corresponding devata god benoji this cross or overlaps is there any further reference uh, that is more clear or you know how how do, how do we go from here this is a basically an upasana pratika venkat so there is no further in what you call philosophy behind this it is an activity given so that you know you identify your your individual aspects to your macrocosmic aspect and then you identify yourself as representational of the macro so that 
you feel that sarvatma bhava within yourself got it bandhu ji i think that that is uh, well well laid out then i don't need to go to my second question which is you know samhita the samhita ha- is uh, further integration the you know the it connects the, the you know prithvi lokam that within that there is a integration um so the five fold you know mahasamhita samhitas showing i think i'll not mix these two now uh, this is good enough bandhu ji um the 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 brahma Brahma Basa, right? The Koshosi, there is a, you know, that, that whatever that Om Kara indicating to, um, Om is used prior to, um, you know, prior to a configuration or a process or um, activity, either in Egna or, you know, Vedopasana or anything for that matter, Om is prior to any of this, uh, uh, prior to that. that means the, the kosh the brahma kosho see that means that that get configured into um it's like branches into that like a um a shoot and a leaf it branches into a leaf right it makes a leaf from a, a shoot that become a leaf or anything else or a fruit is just that it is in any of those upasana when it is gone after with a no before that into that is that a formation that to be seen in upasana is that an expectation in this uh, mm. that the question is okay see upasana is basically how you visualize and imagine these connections the upanishad has given nan that aspect brahmana koshosi brahmana koshosi means you are the both the revealer and concealer of brahma so that is how in, in that mantra it has come in this particular brahma sprino brahma brahma ivapnodi omidi brahma and all those here we have to understand that here again it is about the saguna brahman which is being used for meditation by a person who has the knowledge of vedic knowledge about you know the usages of om at different functions from a brahmachari onwards to garhatya to a you know a yagna and you know permission anugruti wherever permissions are required even at the sagrahasta as a son if you are asking your father that can i go ahead and think then the father will be saying oh so all those places what a how om has become a part and parcel of life shows that that om which is nothing but brahman is is what is in the transaction world also the transaction world is nothing but other than this same brahman only whether you are treating it as as an activity or you are treating it as an object or treating it as a permission or treating it as a part of the yagna every turn of the you know incidents in life you will be coming across om so you are reminded about your own nature as om at every every what you call every breath virtually that is how you one one has to understand this god manoj so there is this uh, i'm trying to validate the sequence is the dharana followed by dhyana is dharana uh, for which the om facilitate dharana towards dhyana is that the sequence because the dharana was taken earlier in the prior you know uh, anuvakas is a dharana dhyana is a sequence or a dharana upasana is a sequence what exactly is that the right sequence that om towards you know dharana for that activity or even getting permission giving permission reading uh, upanishad hearing upanishad om is used prayer 
is that a dharana facilitator hence jhana can happen effectively yes only if you have dharana and you have understood that as undoubtedly you are you own that knowledge once you own that knowledge then only you can meditate upon that so dharana is prior to dhyana dharana dhyana samadhi is how the sequence have to be understood and as i said in this particular not only here everywhere you will find that there is no meditative mentioning anywhere of the nirguna brahman upasana is only on saguna because upasana is a mental activity and for mind without guna it cannot think so nedam ididam upasate when it says it very clearly says that this is beyond your upasana process or method of upasana because yet vacha nabhyutitam ek vak abhyutite tadeva brahmatvam vidhi nedam ididam upasate this is not the words what it is being it is what represented by the words but what becomes an awareness and an experience for us by hearing the word not the object by hearing the word there is an experience happening on the on the that is what the shabda jnanam not the shabda jnanam shabdam that is why that word has got very important is that it we when we hear things we are not only hearing there is an awareness which is kindled in our in our being with which a knowledge is developed in us that knowledge is nothing but awareness but it is not the knowledge as a word nor knowledge as a object because the word is for the object the object is external to you you are the subject every object is external to you and every object external has got a name and that name when it is being heard there is an awareness which is happening inside you inside you i am using as as a you know representational one it is not inside you actually speaking but it is not in the mind because mind is also an object so yet manasana manute ena hur mano matam tadeva brahmatvam vidhi netam mitam upasate that is another part of the mantra same mantra it is not the mind but because of which the mind is able to mind that is brahman not what you think meditate upon the same so nirguna upasana can never be meditated upon you are whatever you meditate upon is only saguna upasana because nedam ididam upasate this cannot be meditated upon that is one thing is clear as a nirguna but for saguna upasana is used for as mentioned for the chitta shuddhi ekagrata and vishalata the mind explodes in the meditation to encompass everything in the world and you identify yourself with everything in the world there is no difference between you and the world that is what is sarvatma bhava or ekagrata or oneness with which we become everything that is brahman that awareness when it happens there is no knower separate no known separate the knower becomes the known and the knower and known cannot be separated out at any point of time but i think this is pretty very nicely uh, you know said to us now that awareness of knowledge that you know that saguna brahman that awareness you know you know it, it has to be this way only 
um that now i i'm connecting back to the shanti mantra uh shanno bhavatar bhavatar bhavat paryama that aryaman has been invoked aryaman is uh, adidevata for awareness who help you with this awareness of the that upasana anuvaga told that awareness of knowledge is that finally is this adidevata help connect these two together and realize it this aryaman is i think maybe when time permit look like this devata is hidden among all of this um that that devata is not explicitly called out this is i'm sort of connecting this way bindu ji i i don't know if if is that the right uh, connection yeah. that is an invoking of arima arima is the representational god or representation of a deity for uh, intelligence and awareness uh, nothing more to be you know extrapolated in such situations venkat yes vidu ji yes i got it because when people talk about awareness a lot awareness awareness all the time that means it's really aryaman and that the broader that awareness of knowledge itself that was assimilated is just facilitating it um, to make it happen uh, i'll leave it at this vidu ji yeah it's a see the see the problem is that we can never be aware of awareness we are awareness but what we say as awareness is the exp- ex- experience of the objects which is at the mental level but that being at the mental level which goes into the form of memory for us to recall into the chitta that when we understand it we call it as you know i am aware my awareness awareness in my awareness and it is that it like it is my thought like that only it is my my, uh, my awareness also we the people are not understanding that when i say that awareness it is my awareness in my awareness when the words are used it is at the mental level but if you really remember that explanation when uh, i started the second chapter of aitari upanishad where shankaracharya very clearly said that you know there is one is the nitya part of it one is the anitya part of it what happening in the mind level as awareness is the anitya part of it it the mental level that is why memories are available and we lose memory but as awareness as life principle it is never lost the the body may lose the body may be discarded but that principle of life or awareness or what you call the what we call it as chaitanyam that is never diminished nor lost nor decayed or nothing happens to it it is present every everywhere it is present in the even the space is present inside that but like the sunlight can be reflected only of the few mediums like mirror water etc it is some of the instruments which show that pulsation of life like animals birds and human beings or creatures things like that but it is not only in that it is there in the trees in the stone in the sand in the drops of water every word that same chaitanya is available that is when you come to know that that is the sarvatma bhava yes mr ji thank you hari om mr ji thank you ingat as a shrini said in in a prior room recently it was just very beautiful listening to all of that so you both gave us a, a real gift um just we closed 
uh, hand raising. And just to let anyone know who might be new, you're welcome to join this house. Uh, you can just locate it uh, in, in the spectrum of houses so that you'll see this more often. And we're always meeting at 8.30, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Wednesday and Friday are the Upanishad classes, and we'll have the sixth Taitriya on Friday. Uh, and Sundays are more general Advaita Vedanta a Q&A. And we'll always on the weekdays open up for discussion after the class as we did today. Uh, and again, 8.30 p.m. IST. Um, if you want to listen to replays of a lot of what we've done in the last few months, they're available here. But there are more Upanishads and other classes available on Bindaji's YouTube channel called Advaitic, ending with IC, Advaitic Talks. The link's in his profile if you need to look that up again. So that's a way to uh, listen back on some beautiful teachings. Thank you for everyone who is here. Uh, again, if you're having thoughts or things you want to discuss and you hesitated to come up, um, please come up in the future. It helps all of us. Uh, a lot of things that I listened to today related directly to things I was reflecting on the last couple days and were very helpful. So um, especially thank you, Bindaji, and thank you for Prakash for being a, another moderator in this house. Um, so before we close, uh, yeah, and Shobha, very beautiful to see you. It seems like the last few Wednesdays. Uh, you're always welcome to come up. Uh, Prakash, do you have anything to close? And then I'll let Bindo have the last word and we'll end the room. No, I think uh, the only thing I want to share is this uh, the very deep uh, unpacking of the the, the, <clears throat> the Anuvakas has to be listened a few times before one can assimilate. So I want to thank Bindoji from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Atmisha. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you, Venkat. And thank you, Manjunath, for your message. We will meet again on Friday. We will continue with the next Anuvak. Okay. Adiyo. Thank you. Adiyo. Good night. Good night. Adiyo.